Uh, tonight we have a very special guest. And she will be talking to and telling us about what needs to be improved as well as what exists in the world of sexuality. So these missionaries were looking at Khajurao. They were, uh, you know, discovering texts like Kama Sutra, and they they couldn't understand uh, people like us. They were like, these people are just, uh, you know, into idolatry. These people are uh, uh, not morally ethical. But you see, morals have nothing to do with it. If you demonize sex, you're going to create rape. You're going to create sodomy. That's what it has done. Because if you are afraid of something, if you're said, if you're told no, you will do it. And that's what's going on. You know, even the agree that everything is, is made from a Eurocentric view. Even all the documentaries on Indian spirituality, uh, all the documentaries, documentaries on uh, BBC name. It's coming from a Eurocentric point of view. Mm -hmm. You know? Christian Even the Kumbhala. So, so, where is our side of the story? You know? Where is our side of the story? Where uh, is... Uh, where are we? So we are sort of being, you know, obliterated out of the equation because we, we are immediately focusing on a Eurocentric, heteronormative uh, point of view. So, right. coming from a point of uh, such uh, uh, blatant misuse of power, men now need to relinquish that power back to the goddess. What is the goddess? The goddess is a symbolic energy. The, she is, is like a black hole. You know, you don't need to think of her as and give her any form. If if you must, uh, uh, practices like BDSM can really, uh, when you surrender to a dominatrix, it's it's almost like surrendering to the feminine principle. Exactly, surrendering everything for that brief moment in time. And time doesn't exist. So through that moment of total submission, can you actually gain complete control? There are the power. Thing, the thing with BDSN is it a lot of it is psychological. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're just ready to, to embrace this uh, ideology, I know for a lot of I think can heal men tremendously if they're just ready to, to embrace this uh, ideology. I know for a lot of men, this is probably normal and they are just usually submissive. But um, I think this, this is a healthy thing for all to do, to surrender to the power of the the cosmic vagina. You know? Why is it the Milky Way? Why does it remind us of the breasts? You know, uh, esoterically, we are all incarnating from the sign of cancer, all humanity at this time. So that means there's a heavy feminine vibration with all of us, but we are bringing in all the wounding and all the trauma vibration with it. Mm -hmm. So now I think is, is, the time to understand sex work is not, oh, I'm going to sleep with the guy, he's going to give me money, and that's it. Sex work becomes like a, a journey to healing. I wanted to, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, since we're on that, I wanted to go um, down the list a little bit because it's important to me because I've heard your um, a lot of your um, your research and so forth, and it's right on um it's interesting and it's really i need people to hear you and um so um there's one thing that you brought up which was the on the female sexuality disconnect and it's really important to me that um that our audience um listens to you and, and hears 
you know, your um, perception and your research on this. So, uh, and then we'll go, and then we'll go down the list. Please, got that. Yeah, on the on on how females are so disconnected from their. So, uh, women will usually uh, fake an orgasm like seventy percent of the times. I would say like eighty percent because I I do uh, work with a lot of women also, and uh, one of the most common things, and this is not even menopausal. This is. Uh, right after getting married, having a kid, somewhere 26, 27, ton of women become desensitized in the vagina. They have no sensation. It feels like a numb vagina. It's because they, first they we, we hate the body parts. If I'm going to abuse you, I'm going to say you are a cant. Why? Why do we use the body parts as something to rock or treat? Or oh, he's a dick. Mm -hmm. Why? A phallus is a beautiful thing, mm. you know. Or oh, he's a cock. Or oh, he's a cocksucker. I mean, see, society has pinned these into pejorative terms. She's a fucking pussy. Or oh, he's a pussy. Why? Why do you need to equate cowardice with the vagina? Right. Makes no sense. Right. No, I've always, I've always, no I've always told people. A uh, kind? Please. Please yeah. don't call, please don't call. Is actually someone who's conscious, mm -hmm. uh, like a medicine woman of, of the old, someone who you would go to if, if your periods didn't come and she would look, she would insert her fingers in and she would uh, find out because there were no gynecologists back then. Mm -hmm. The wise woman was the cunt mm -hmm. and the wise woman has been overthrown by patriarchy. And she becomes a witch. Mm -hmm. She becomes a plant. Because she has the medicine. Mm -hmm. You don't have the medicine. So how are you going to degrade her? Mm -hmm. She's a plant. Mm -hmm. You yeah. see how systematically uh, masculine repression has stifled feminine expression of creativity you know, I, I read this meme that said, if it says anonymous, it was probably written by a woman. So you understand, if it says anonymous at the end of a quote, it was mm -hmm. it's written by a woman. Because back in the days, women had to take pen names to write. We were not allowed to write. We oh. had to take pen names and make, pretend to be men to write. Oh, wow. Education. Yeah was denied to us. So, do you understand? People all understood matriarchy. Mm -hmm. Indigenous people who were people of the land, who were people connected to the land as a mother, always understand, understood matriarchy. Because uh, in fact, they say matriarch for that. And a ton of the pharaohs were actually women. And they've been hidden. Their legacy has been hidden. Just like a lot of the Viking warriors were women. Not all of them were men. Like 46% were women. Vikings fighting alongside men. So uh, even uh, African cultures... The woman is is it. I, I watch a ton of uh, South African films, actually Nollywood. I, I watch a ton of their films. The woman is, is the archetypal strength. Archetypal strength. Mm -hmm. She will tell you what to do, even if she's negative. Mm -hmm. She's got that duality about her. Mm -hmm. But men are always flat. Mm -hmm. You know, men fall flat. But, but the feminine psyche has more duality. Mm -hmm. You know, so women as rulers also function differently. Mm -hmm. Even if they approach it uh, as if they have a dick. Like, for instance, there are women, enablers, who are men. Mm -hmm. Who have been bred by patriarchy. Who are tools of patriarchy. Uh... 
who are just here to repress feminine expression mm-hmm yeah and that's yeah i i yeah i totally agree um and a lot of um radical feminists um seem to be just who you're talking about who keep pushing issues on sexuality and um sex workers and so forth and degrading it and and putting it down and using their research that that that's not as a whole research but a certain segment of sex work that's where they base their um argument from they don't base it from people like Actually, myself or or someone else sex mm-hmm. work is one of the oldest professions and it's never going away so if we do not understand that then we are fools uh there are like i said women the west for instance the vestal virgins mm-hmm. in greece there were women like this in india uh they they were the temple priestesses mm-hmm. and they would initiate men into the sacred ritual of tantra by which a man after war would have to spend 3 days with the priestess and then go back to his home to his wife because it was literally uh the job of the priestess to take that war out of the man to through the 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 union and friction of sexual organs to release that energy mm-hmm. you know so when you look at a uh, sex work i think that uh, in the sex industry there needs to be education about how to prepare yourself for this work Mm-hmm. because it can be very emotionally taxing it can be very damaging to the psyche from when from where we come and how the world perceives us even What? me for uh, just talking about this i'm going to be a uh, label something or the other just for right. talking about this exactly but women need to understand why they are doing it the clear motivation a ton of these women are incarnated priestesses who are here to do their job mm-hmm. but a ton of women are are again looking at the money as a mm-hmm. quick fix mm-hmm. and trying to get a, that's why so many tragedies happen exactly because the girls are not prepared you know i started working on a book it's called pussy talks Mm-hmm. and it's it's a book uh, like it's a project i won't call it a book it's like none other it's where women contribute their stories mm-hmm. so i've got stories from like a, a mongolian girl who was raped by the us army you know uh, to fire to yes oh wow a, a mongolian girl you know she was raped by the us army and she came back to the us and she found healing she found a guy also she married but she's got a disastrous story so there are women like this who have come up with their stories of rape women who come up with their stories of sexual emancipation women who have come up with stories of of uh, dating websites we need to basically find a way to prepare these girls you know prepare the girls who are going out there give them a support system Mm-hmm. give them the new how of the trade from more experienced people this this should be a uh, uh, like like for instance if a guy is submissive he should be able to uh, talk with his wife about it and maybe initiate her into the process with someone who is professional and can initiate her into the process exactly you know? that's exactly that's that's so true that yeah. is so, true. so this, this kind of openness needs to come forth from people who are in the industry 
people who are ready to teach the young girls because this is a lot of energetic work that needs to be done exactly become a sex worker you've got to prepare your body your mind your soul it's it's because then you become in the, in the act of giving because every single man you touch is healed mm. you know before you start the work you say may this man receive what he needs may he go come in peace may he go in peace mm-hmm. you know may may he this experience both built him in some way you know so okay so um yes me, sorry to interrupt i i just wanted to um kind of get another since we're not going to be able to use a little segment that we just used i want to i want you i w- i would like yes. to ask you on um again on on the female sexuality you were speaking on the female sexuality and how through patriarchy we've lost our connection yeah. with the vagina so, so we were told from time immemorial that women are not sexual i'm sure you've heard it mm-hmm. that oh, women don't need sex the guy needs sex right mm-hmm. no the win- woman has more nerve endings on her uterus from a vagina to a uterus than a guy can even dream of millions of nerve endings you know so immediately you understand that the feminine body was created to give pleasure to receive pleasure mm-hmm. so in the ancient times this was probably a uh, known and practiced mm-hmm. but as uh, these patriarchal abrahamic religions dominate started dominating the world women were forced to wear cover their faces mm-hmm. you know women were put away andar mahal live in the other side don't come in the mosque it, somebody can, don't show your hair somebody can see your hair and get attracted to you they were you know? a distraction to men yeah. yeah because men realized that women are way more sexual than men mhm cuz we you are understand? they realize that only by controlling them can they control this even today in some parts of the world we have genital uh, uh, female genital mutilation mm-hmm. so we don't feel pleasure Mm-hmm. So that's how regressive society. I'll cut it off. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's so, hard. I mean, that's that's where that that's the space we're talking from, my friend. It's not safe. Do you understand? It's not yeah. safe. It's not safe for you. It's not safe for me. It's it's not safe for any girl out there. Mm-mm. While growing up, I have I have myself been abused. you know but i was very young like i was barely 9 years old i was someone who was close to me and the family and i could not tell anyone for years and years and years i carried it like a deep deep uh, wound also another thing that i have uh, observed about myself is that uh, men tend to have a very uh, strong reaction to me you know mhm <coughs> it's either great i love you i want to have sex with you or it's like i hate you <laughs> right and i faced yeah. this many times over and over again and uh, i realized that we as women face this all the time maybe not as exaggerated as what i have faced but I know as women we face it all the time and we just cannot be ourselves we cannot wear what we want because you know my husband's out there saying are you sure you're wearing that and going out mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh, are you sure you know you don't know why do you need to wear that so you know it's it's there mm-hmm. so we as women we've been told that oh my god then there's this supposed virgin and poor complex mm-hmm. either you're a virgin and you're perfect and you're like it's the eve and the duality 
you know, where Eve is the uh, ever submissive good wife and Lilith is, is the eater of children because she refused a missionary with Adam and was thrown out of heaven. Like, you know, get out. I have my Black Moon Lilith videos. You can check them out. Well, this is Tina from TinaHills.com and today I'm speaking about a very controversial topic, Lilith, uh, the astrological Lilith. So I'm going to delve into her myth, but I, what I want to concentrate here is uh, the lunar uh, aspect. in your chart what is the meaning of Lilith I'll get into all that and then I'll make 12 videos uh, which will describe Lilith through the houses so uh, if you've seen the TV series uh, True Blood then you might have uh, heard heard uh, them uh, refer to Lilith as as the the patroness or the patron deity for abortion now, I don't want to get into uh, any controversial topics of whether abortion is good or whether abortion is bad. But I think that such pop cultural, uh, uh, such pop culture depictions of Lilith can truly damage her uh, true essence. Because when you hear something as disastrous as abortion, you're immediately like, oh my God, what's going on? But you've got to take a step back and you've got to think, okay, what? what does it mean abortion is a woman's decision to do what she wants with that body and Lilith symbolizes that very freedom that very decision making ability of a woman you know so uh, Lilith is essentially um, known as black moon Lilith the lunar apogee uh, to explain it simply it's it's kind of like the midpoint between the moon and the earth. It's actually a place of void. There's nothing when we speak of black moon Lilith, we don't speak of any planetary body as such. We speak of a void, right? And um, so, so here you've got to understand that when we speak of void, Lilith is like Kali. Kali is void. Hecate, Diana, Isis. So all these are uh, associations of the feminine uh, regenerative processes. This is Lilith. This is Kali. They are cycles. Okay, uh, Diana, cycles, Demeter, Hecate. So, uh, so Lilith is actually cycles. And if you really look at it deeply, um, the energy of Lilith is very Plutonic. Why? Because it deals with uh, death and rebirth and sex. Okay. And 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 you have if you're touched by Lilith in your natal chart, then then you have to find balance with her because otherwise this can show up as a number of imbalances in your sacral chakra. And 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 what could happen with that? That's that simply means that you have a loss of creativity, a loss of fertility, a loss of, of really a feeling fulfilled with life. So sacral chakra imbalance is not good. So Lilith has to be balanced. And how do you do that? By understanding uh, what is the symbolization of Lilith. Now, uh, if you study your natal chart, and you see the positioning of Lilith. Uh, by just studying that placement, you will understand what type of a feminist you are. What do I mean by that? I mean the kind of, of Lilith is raw feminine power. I, I've been speaking about Hecate, Diana, Kali, Demeter, Isis. So you've understood that. You've got the crux of this, that this is the very transformative uh, Mula Prakriti. This is again another Sanskrit word, which is which symbolizes the creatrix, the feminine creatrix. So here Lilith is kind of like that. Uh, and if you look at the Bible myths, Lilith was the first wife of Adam. And she refused to uh, be subservient to him. 
Okay. She refused to surrender to him. Why? Because as I said, Lilith symbolizes our raw, unbridled, untamed uh, feminine power. So she's like, F off. You are uh, my mate. You are equal to me. So that was not liked by Adam. So he banished her and he told God to create Eve. And God created Eve from the rib of Adam. Right? These are Abrahamic religions, monotheistic religions are patriarchal. Okay? So they, they take uh, power away from this void principle. This, this principle that is known as the mother matrix. That is Lilith. And she's got a bad reputation as a, as a demoness, as a baby killer. Why? Because she is that, that, uh, that power in a woman that says, I don't want to have a baby. I want to work. Because she's that power in a woman that says, uh, I don't want a family. I want to explore the world. Because she is that power in a woman that says, I, I, I want to have uh, sex with many partners. It's what I want to do. So there is nothing you can do about it. I want to live the way I want to live my life. So this is the very key to understanding Lilith, that she is like Pluto, but if Pluto is the masculine, then Lilith is, I forget, is that Lilith is the black moon Lilith, is void or it's a place of darkness. But don't be afraid of darkness because darkness is not evil. This is something you've got to understand. Why is Kali dark? Because space is, is dark. Okay? Just because things are not visible to us, it, just because things are not visible to us doesn't make them uh, evil. Right? Even if you look at the Bible, there is a quote that says, Darkness surrounds the pavilion of God. So the great womb, the, the great womb that created the universe is dark as Lilith is dark. So there is nothing to be afraid of this dark, feminine, unbridled energy. You have Lilith in your natal chart. And it's, it's, if you're a male, then it's, it's really imperative that you find balance. Because otherwise you can have uh, sexual demons uh, eating away at your key and ojas. So, as I said, Lilith is sexuality, primal, raw sexuality. So, don't be afraid of the dark. Uh, womb is dark. When you were in your mother's womb, you never felt afraid because uh, the darkness is what you welcomed. So, when working with Lilith, you have to welcome the darkness. You have to understand that. Uh, as I said, okay, so Lilith is connected to the three lower chakras, okay, and, and this has to do with grounding, uh, relating and relationships, and self-care. So with Lilith in the natal chart, you'll always see that how you give and receive uh, care, and especially self-care can, can uh, be revealed by studying Black Moon Lilith and her placements. So that was, um, okay, before I end the video, that introduces Black Moon Lilith and then I'll hop over all the 12 signs and Black Moon Lilith through all the 12 signs. But before I end this introductory video, I want to tell you is remember that Black Moon Lilith represents all that we judge and hate in the outside world. And why is that? It's because we are afraid to acknowledge those aspects of our Okay? If, if, if we are afraid of something, it's because we are not looking within. If we hate something, it's because we, we have somewhere it reminds us of ourselves. And we are freakishly confronted with our own demons. So working with Black Moon Lilith is not easy. It is about the resurrection and facing of your demons. And finally putting them to rest. But this requires hard work. So if you want to know uh, how Lilith works through the 12 signs, then join me for the next segment of videos. Thank you. Uh, but essentially that's it. That uh, I don't want to sleep with this guy. 
with a missionary position. So God's like, okay, you're out of here. And Adam, <laughs> come here. Let me open up your rib. Here's your rib. And here I animated. And there you have Eve. And Eve is going to bam, get into the missionary position just like that. Oh, wow. So this <laughs> Lilith and Eve duality or this virgin and poor duality that we have. Mm-hmm. That's good with us. Well, you can't dress a certain way. You can't do makeup. You're a whore. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the, the word whore and slut is used against women so much. I remember one time this one guy um, I was dating and then we had sex and I didn't feel pleased. And so I was like, well, let's go buy me something or whatever. Cause you just are selfish, you know? And he says, I thought you were a good girl. I'm like, what does that have to do with you not pleasing me? You need to please me some other kind of way. <laughs> you know? I mean, you, we can't, this is an imbalance here. I can't, you know. Even, even when it comes to sex work, these men think that it is just a duty of the women because they're paying them and then there's just no give and take. Hey, it's Kiara. Thank you for tuning in. Um, We'll have more next week. Please don't forget to subscribe, follow, like, and um, get in contact with me if you want to be on the program. Um, It doesn't matter day or night. I'm here. It doesn't matter what country you're in. She was in India. And um, I got up at two o'clock in the morning and got over here so that we can do this. Uh, It's important to me that we all start waking out of this darkness and um, anti-sexual, anti-human, anti-human, yeah, (laughs) relationship we have with ourselves and with others. Uh, Thank you very much for tuning in and I will be back next week. Thank you so much. Bye.